What's up guys? Uh, I'm way late on this, but I had to make a video uh, showcasing my top 10 most anticipated movies of this year, 2022. Let's get right into it. Let's go. What's up guys? Scream has already come out, so obviously this that is not going to be on this list. If it was on this list, I probably would have put it it's somewhere in the, like the top five, maybe top three. Did just find out today though that Scream 6 has been greenlit. So that's great news. We're all happy to hear that. Uh, will Matthew Lillard come back in the, uh, th this new movie? I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, let's dive right in. I'm gonna give you one honorable mention and that is going to be Salem's Lot uh, and Confession Time. I still have not watched the original Salem's Lot. I threw it in. I didn't realize it was like a mini series. I thought it was just like a, a quick, hour and a half movie, two hour movie. And I think it's like three hours long. And I, at the time, I just didn't have the time. So I need to watch it. But I might wait and watch this remake that, that's coming out. Now this remake does look interesting. Uh, it does have some heavy hitters. Spencer Tree Clark is an actor that I think is highly underrated. He was in the Last House on the Left remake. We all know him from Gladiator. The Town That Dreaded Sundown remake. I guess he loves remakes, but man, he, he is a captivating actor, and so when I saw that he was attached to this, and I think he's the lead in this, that got my attention. Of course, genre veteran William Sadler is in this, uh, Alfred Woodard. But it's based on the Stephen King book uh, about a writer who goes to this town, and there happens to be some vampire action there. So I'm really curious about this movie, and I think I'm going to wait to watch the original and watch this one first. Okay, uh, number 10 is going to be the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm glad I'm getting this. I'm going to try to get this out before the new movie comes out, okay? Because it's coming out in like two weeks. Uh, I did a trailer reaction the other day. The trailer looks really fun. This could be horrible, okay, guys? This could be completely horrible. They, they don't know how to properly title these movies anymore. Uh, the, the continuity is so all over the place. It's insane. This new movie, uh, it's, a, it's a requel takes place uh, after the first movie 50 years later now I guess they're going with something like that even though it's not quite 50 years yet highly excited for any Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that comes out and I might hate it but I'm hoping it's like more like Texas Chainsaw 3D and I know you guys are gonna throw tomatoes at me but I love that movie so hopefully this one's fun it looks fun I mean that scene on the bus that looks crazy number nine gonna go with Terrifier 2 Damien Leon just had a birthday the other day too so happy birthday Damien but um, I thought this was supposed to come out last year and I guess hopefully they get their ducks in a row and it finally comes out this year because art has garnered quite the fan base, you know, and I think there's a, a, a huge desire for this movie to come out. You know, there are a lot of fans of Terrifier, the first movie. I wasn't a fan the first time I watched it. Second time, I ended up really liking it. I've seen it a few times now and it, it is definitely a fun movie, but it's, it's a horror movie for sure. It's not for everybody. Art is definitely a clown not to be messed with. I, I'm curious about Terrifier 2. We did have a trailer last year, so hopefully we get this thing sooner than later. Number eight, Jurassic World Dominion. I'm gonna put it on here, even though I really did not like the last one at all. I mean, it felt like Lost World 2.0, but just a bad version of it. Chris Pratt, and I'm not speaking personally, okay? I'm just talking about the actor. He is very one note. It seems like he plays the same type of character in every movie that he's done. Everything I've watched him is the same. And he's great in the style of acting that he does. Like, don't get me wrong, Star-Lord is a fun-ass character. He's just not the leading man that I want uh, in these new Jurassic Park movies. You know, he's no Jeff Goldblum. I don't know much about this movie, but I do love dinosaurs. I'm a fan of the franchise. You know, it brings back a lot of memories of my, my son when he was young. He was a dinosaur fanatic. He loved that movie, the first couple movies. So I'll give it a chance, you know? I'm, I'm still excited. We'll see. It could be horrible, I don't know. Number seven is Nope, Jordan Peele's new movie. There is no plot out for this movie yet, which is good, I like that. Jordan Peele has really um, made a name for himself in horror with Us, I freaking loved Us. Get Out was decent, but the directing panache was definitely there, you know? Get Out has its, you know, it made a mark, okay? Let's put it that way. But uh, after us, I'm really excited to see what this movie's gonna be. But on this list, besides maybe one other movie, it's, it feels like the most secretive plot. And you got a good cast here, like freaking Michael Wincott, freaking Top Dollar from The Crow is in this. Daniel Kalula from uh, Get Out. 
uh, Steven Yoon, Donna Mills, that's a name I haven't heard in ages. So quite the eclectic cast in this movie, but I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about the movie except that Jordan Peele's directing it and I think it's probably gonna be very unique. Number six is Black Phone. This is uh, one of maybe two Blumhouse movies that's on here. You can probably guess the other one. Um, this trailer has already been released. Uh, Ethan Hawke is in it. I think Ethan Hawke, even though he doesn't like doing horror movies, I think he stated that, but he is great in horror movies. And he, I think he plays the bad guy in this. It, you know, it involves kidnapping. There's a creepy mask in the movie. It just looks like a really fun thriller. You know, and I got a feeling there's going to be some nice surprises in this movie. I think they did a good job with the trailer, not giving away too much, you know, just showing that the kid's kidnapped and uh, being terrorized by Ethan Hawke's character. But uh, I got a feeling there's going to be a third act in this movie that's going to freaking blow our balls off. OK, or lady balls. Number five, Final Destination six. I just heard about this the other day. God, I hope it's happening. Uh, that's a franchise that I'm like. They were very successful, and then all of a sudden they just stopped making them. Like, I think the last Final Destination movie was 2009, and the reason I remember that is because it came out the same day as Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, and it, it beat it. It was number one at the box office. Finally, we're getting a new movie, and plus, how do you top that freaking last scene in Final Destination 5? That was an amazing twist. Without giving away any spoilers, where is this one gonna land timeline-wise? I don't know. Don't know anything about the movie. I mean, it's a Final Destination movie, okay? It's gonna be people get, getting killed by death. These movies are so fun to watch because of how creative you can get with the kills, you know, because you're killed by an accident, or I guess a purposeful accident, because death, it, it wants you back. Number four, Evil Dead Rise. I am so freaking pumped for this movie, especially after how great the last movie was. And you could call the last movie a sequel if you wanted to. You wouldn't be wrong. Who knows where they'll go with this one? I haven't dug deep into the plot yet, so I don't even know if Bruce Campbell's in it. Let me know down in the comments. Um, but reading the plot synopsis, a twisted tale of two estranged sisters whose reunion is cut short by the rise of flesh possessed, possessing zombies, thrusting them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish, and I don't need to read anymore. That looks, it looks like it's gonna be fun. I can't wait for the first trailer to drop for Evil Dead Rise. Number three, Orphan First Kill. I believe this one is coming out. Holy crap, I was looking at the date. It said January 28th, so obviously it's been pushed back. So I'm thinking maybe this month, next month? I don't know, it should be coming really soon. I'm curious because I believe the actress that played in the first movie is in this movie, so I don't know how that's gonna work. I guess I could have done more homework on the movie. It's one of those movies though, it has such an amazing twist in the first movie that I don't wanna know anything going into this movie, so forgive me for not giving you too many details about the plot, if any, uh, but this is a prequel. I will tell you that, that's all I know, that this is supposed to take place before, so it could be really interesting, all right? I guess they could make her look you know, as young as possible. Because, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the first Orphan, one of the greatest twists I've ever seen in my life, by the way, so don't listen for like the next 30 minutes if you don't know the, wanna know the twist of the first Orphan. But we find out that she's actually an adult, even though she looks like a 10 year old kid. So in the prequel, are they gonna make, now we know that she's an adult, are they gonna make her look like a kid? I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. I, I'm brainstorming here in real time. Number two is X, the new Ty West movie. I literally just uh, recorded a review for House of the Devil. The reason I wanted to watch that movie so bad is after I saw the trailer for X, which looks like a combination of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre mixed with Boogie Nights because they're, they're like shooting a porno in this house. It really feels like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I will bet that X is gonna be more uh, of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie than the new one that's actually coming out, or a better one, I guess. You know, Ty West is a, a visually enticing director. He, he definitely has his own stamp. Uh, he, he's one of the big leagues when it comes to direction, kind of like Jordan Peele earlier. And if he puts out anything, I want to see it. So X looks very interesting. Also, by the way, it's A24, you know? A24, you got my attention. Guys, hold on, break in the video real quick. Um, I'm actually making my my lunch, some uh, spaghetti. There's one movie, one movie that I forgot to put on this list. It always happens, but it happens to be, this would be, easily be in the top three, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna put it right here before number one. That is Hellraiser. 
Good God, I can't believe I forgot to put Hell... Because it's one of those movies, like, for years, you constantly keep hearing about a Hellraiser reboot. And then years go by and it never happens. So, I think finally it's supposed to happen. David Bruckner is behind it, who did The Night House, which is one of the best movies of last year. It's amazing. So, that has me really excited. Really freaking excited. Uh, as far as, like, the story, I don't really know anything about the story. If it's a remake, I'm wondering if they're going to try to retell the original. But do you do you recast Kirsty? You know, I, I I don't know. That's Ashley Lawrence. I would hope Ashley Lawrence would have a part in the movie if they're going to recast Kirsty. Okay, that I think that might be a fair trade because that's an iconic character. You know, and you definitely want to approach that lightly. So yeah, Hellraiser. For sure. Glad I, I noticed it on Twitter. Somebody mentioned it on Twitter. I was like, good God, how could I forget freaking Hellraiser, right? And uh, by the way, guys, before we get to number one, this is going to be part, not this, but what I'm recording today because I got the house to myself. Um, this is going to be uh, a patron vlog. Uh, if you're over at my patron page, uh, become a Drumnum's patron, then uh, you can uh, get, uh, I try to do like monthly vlogs, just showing you behind the scenes stuff. Like right now, I'm I'm uh, putting together, I'm editing this this countdown. There I am, right there. So, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, we try to do like monthly live hangouts. We'll watch a movie together, stuff, you know, fun stuff. And I try to keep it loose and get creative. But, uh, yeah, biggest thing is just support. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Uh, every every bit helps, you know, to uh, keep my, my equipment up to date and uh, keep my content the best it can possibly be. So, I've talked long enough. Time to get down to number one, so I'll give it back to myself to give you the number one most anticipated movie of the year. Are you really that surprised? And then, number one, yeah, no surprise here, Halloween ends. I mean, I'm wearing a Halloween Kills shirt, right? I'm a Halloween fanboy, all right? I can't help it. I I'm a, I loved Halloween Kills, all right? I know, and I, I can already see the comments now. I hated Halloween Kills, dot, 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 and you guys are gonna tell me why you hated Halloween Kills. I, I get it, you don't like it. I understand why you don't like it. Uh, it's a polarizing movie. I loved it. But the thing I love about this movie is I don't really know anything about it. I know that it takes place four years later. Um, I'm a little nervous about the, the pandemic being involved. I hope they're not putting the pandemic in this movie. I hope they're being metaphorical. Possibilities of Halloween ends. This is the final chapter in the David Gordon Green trilogy. Okay? So all bets are off. Like, you know, like he said in freaking Scream 3. I want a, a freaking brutal Bloody Myers. I want to end Laurie Strode. That's a mean thing to say. I want Laurie Strode to be awesome in this movie. Don't get me wrong. You know, and I'm glad that she wasn't front and center in Kills. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people didn't like Kills. One of the reasons. But I want this to be the Laurie versus Myers movie, you know, and I want to be surprised. I want them to come up with something that really throws a curveball. Enough said. I am really excited for Halloween Ends. And uh, October. Come, coming coming fast, all right? I mean, we're already in February. It's insane. They already started shooting the movie. Can't wait. Halloween ends. That's it, guys. That's my top 10 most anticipated horror movies of the year. Let me know down in the comments your most anticipated. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Follow my drum drums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum drum out.